Berken, a small agricultural city in the northeastern part of Morocco. This is the area where most Moroccans are from who moved to the Netherlands to sustain the economy 40 years ago. Berken is also the city where Omar El Mahi and his family recently decided to move back to. He believes the country will offer his children a brighter future than the Netherlands. He and his wife already own several companies in the Netherlands, but now started one in Morocco as well. They pack fruit and vegetables, destined for the Netherlands. Europe is actually done with everything. Farming, growing, everything. But Morocco is still 30 to 35 years behind Europe. Here everything is just starting. The agricultural business, the infrastructure, new bridges, you name it. There really is a lot of work in Morocco right now. While the Netherlands is suffering from an economic crisis, Morocco has seen an impressive economic growth. According to the Moroccan Investment Development Agency, one of the reasons is that the country has managed to escape the recent North African uprisings. Omar compares Morocco's economic success to that of countries like Poland and Slovakia. The cost of labor in Morocco is very cheap. That's one of the reasons why you see a lot of foreigners coming to Morocco to start a business. According to the Dutch Statistics Bank, over 1,700 Dutch Moroccans left the Netherlands last year, 200 more than the year before. However, these are not exact numbers, as many decide not to officially immigrate so that they can keep a dual nationality. Mohamed Sayem is the coordinator of a Moroccan-based foundation that has been supporting returning migrants for the past 24 years. He notices a sudden trend of more Dutch companies popping up in the region. Entrepreneurs in particular are taking serious steps to come back to Morocco. They are investigating the possibilities to start a business and, if it's possible, to make a living here. Some of the world's most prominent car brands are now setting up shop in Morocco. Last year Renault inaugurated a giant car factory in the country. In April this year, Dacia announced to consider moving their production from Eastern Europe to Morocco. The booming car business also attracted this entrepreneur. He quit his job in the Netherlands and now owns a car shop and car maintenance center in Morocco. Morocco is a country which is quite virgin. And, you know, I look for opportunities, I look for, look for what we have and what we don't have. And based on that, I try to uh, uh, create, you know, opportunities, businesses. Even though the Moroccan economy is growing, still nearly 10% of the citizens are jobless. The current king tries to encourage entrepreneurs like Omar and Amin to move to Morocco, as it provides job opportunities for the locals. We receive an allowance from the Moroccan government. All the machinery that we buy is subsidized 75%. In one month time, 1,000 people from the village will start working in Omar's factory. They will be peeling shrimps, destined for the Netherlands. Everything you see here, all these chairs and tables, that's where people will be sitting, peeling the shrimps. But not only the economic situation triggers Dutch Moroccans to wish to return. Moroccan youth living in the Netherlands are overrepresented in the criminality numbers. At the same time, the extreme right-wing Freedom Party, led by Geert Wilders, called PVV, is increasing in popularity. In February, the PVV started the so-called Moroccans debate in the parliament. The party blames the Islam for all the problems with Moroccan youth. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no moderate Islam. There are moderate Muslims, but there is no moderate Islam. This former MP and political activist admits some migrants are causing trouble. But he believes it's unfair how a whole community is now being portrayed. As a, a enemy of the rest of the society, as a danger, as a risk. He wrote a letter on behalf of the National Society of Moroccans to combat these ideas. Especially the Moroccans are the most targeted minority in the Netherlands. It was for me a lesson that you have to fight daily to maintain the democratic level in the country uh, because I saw and I still see that some populistic tendencies have uh, 
bad influence on the, the laws of the procedures and also on the position of the Dutch parliament. According to the Dutch Statistics Bank, a lot of Moroccans don't feel at home in the Netherlands. Many have said they want to leave the country, but they're afraid to tell it on camera. Afraid of losing their job when their boss might find out, and afraid of the response of the Dutch government. This is what one person told me after I asked why she wants to move back to Morocco. The political climate is changing rapidly. I'm worried that one of my children, whose name is Mohammed, will not be able to get a proper job, even though he has his A-levels. Foreigners who definitely want to immigrate to Morocco can receive funding from the Dutch government. However, the parliament decided to change the law in July this year, making it harder for people to get this support. Last year, the Dutch Migration Institute received nearly 200 Moroccan applicants for this support. The institute is worried there will be a run of immigrants moving back before the new law will apply next year. It is new. We have already noticed a run of immigrants leaving, right now also Turkish people. And that is not always a positive sign, because sometimes people can rush into deciding to immigrate without considering the consequences very carefully. Amin also advises his friends and colleagues in the Netherlands who share his ambitions to really think it through. A lot of them wish wishes to to come back to their uh, you know, native country, absolutely, and to start something. But it's not that easy. You have to have uh, you know ideas, uh, capital, money to invest. Omar and Amin are both happy they made this choice and see a bright future for their children in Morocco. According to experts, the Moroccan economy has great potential to bloom. They expect more and more people to follow Omar and Amin's example. This is Pauline Den Hartog-Jager, Berken, Morocco.